inside Pate Island, a cock crowed, and from the depths of space a summons, the Adhan, crescendoed. Sea winds tugged at a little girl's lemon green scarf, revealing dense black curly hair that blew into her eyes. From within her mangrove hideout, the scrawny six-year-old, wearing an oversized floral dress that she was supposed to grow into, watched dense storm clouds hobble inland. She decided that these were monster steps, a monster whose strides left streaks of pink light on the sky. Sea water lapped at her knees and her bare feet sank into the black sun as she clutched another scrawny being, a dirt white purring kitten. She was betting that the storm, her monster, would reach land before a passenger laden dow, now muddling its way towards the cracked wharf to the right of her. She held her breath. Homecomers, she called all passengers. Wajio. My name is Yvonne Adyambo War. I'm from Kenya and I write. Uh, being a writer in Kenya is to be surrounded by an immensity of stories and strange, strange ideas and uh, all sorts of possibilities and everything that stimulates the imagination, maybe overstimulates the imagination. The worst thing is the absence of uh, infrastructure to support uh, the production of uh, the products of the imagination. <laughs> it's people. Uh, the best thing about Kenya are its people. Yeah. Writing. Um, uh, there's nothing quite like uh, confronting the space, the uh, whatever forms, form it takes, uh, whether it's a blank screen, and uh, um, occupying this, uh, you know, this very small circle, and entering that, using that to enter into the realm of the imagination, and uh, it's an incredible journey into the unknown, and. I particularly love that, the, the unknowingness, but the discovery. So it's like an, an, an endless treasure hunt. The challenge, of course, is getting there, uh, avoiding all the other possibilities that the world presents, like you know, cleaning your room, uh, painting your nails, all those important, necessary things uh, that one does before one actually sits down and gets into the process of creation. But once I'm in there, um, it's very hard to get out. I would, I would like to resist that. I really would. But having said that, the moment uh, one's work acquires a kind of public presence, all sorts of demands are then made on the writer. And even if you resist um, the, the role the public or um, you know, different constituencies want you to play, it, uh, it, they, they, it almost becomes necessary. It's almost as if uh, there's a, uh, I hesitate to use it, there's an expectation of a prophetic imperative. So um, I, as a writer, I found myself being invited to comment on the politics, on the society, on, you know, the, play, the space shuttle landing and, and, you know, the discovery of new viruses. And it's it's a fascinating space and the more one resists it the more the demands actually seem to increase so maybe maybe in the my in the imagination of the world there's a place for the writer but i i, I know i'm not the first or the, or the last of the writers to try to resist that place yeah. i think one it, it, it may be easy to forget that the state is merely representative of the society, of, of people and their, and their needs and their desires. The state involvement um, is absolutely necessary in, 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 in certain key aspects. For example, uh, making sure the arts and certainly writing is in the curriculum, in the school curriculum. Um, so uh, the, the generations that emerge are exposed to and encounter uh, literature or counter the arts. Um, other forms of state involvement would be around, you know, just providing an enabling environment, infrastructure, tax reductions, <laughs> um, and uh, you, you know, that the kind of you know 
let the, let the state play its role, provide the infrastructure to enable a person, an artist, a writer, to be the best kind of writer, artist, person they can possibly be. Hard to say. Uh, it, it would be hard to pick. A, a, each, each book, each writer has offered something to me. Um, I could talk about John O'Donoghue and his capacity, the poet, uh, and his book Anamkara and his capacity to, uh, you know, to to bring uh, the idea of thresholds into one place and allow a writer and a human being to engage with all his or her different uh, ways of being. Um, uh, I could talk about Tolkien, but I will, more recently, uh, the text I encountered that was absolutely, um, I find very interesting is, is the text of Sven Lindqvist, Exterminate All the Brutes. Um, but I mention it because it, it's engagement with uh, a whole lot of things that I think I'm, I'm, I'm curious about. Um, human pathologies, the way uh, our societies hide our darknesses, how we project our own fears and uh, sorrows and horrors uh, onto others. So he took, uh, among other things, he takes the heart of darkness, Joseph Conrad's heart of darkness, and uh, gives it the kind of reading that um, the nun who was particularly influential in my moving into this part, Sister Maureen, may she rest in peace, uh, he gives a kind of reading that she uh, uh, offered me, the idea of looking at Heart of Darkness as a, a literary autopsy of the European soul. And I'd not encountered that again. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole different, there's a kind of intellectual and cultural jujitsu that happened that transferred the heart of darkness to the heart of the Congo. But, and then I run into uh, the text of Sven Lindqvist in which he repositions the heart of darkness right where Sister Maureen had situated it for me. Uh, but also in this lyrical, lyrical way. And uh, it's a book I would actually put next to Dante's uh, Purgatorio. Uh, in which Sven himself plays the role of Virgil. So, um, yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating little book, a kind of travelogue into the, the, the soul of uh, the, uh, our human darknesses, but does so in a way that's also kind and transformative and, and, and beautiful, but also truthful. Um, so I know you have just... Uh Send off the last set of proofs, or yeah. <laughs> meant to send off the last set of proofs, or maybe actually beyond that. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I'm hoping you can talk a little bit about what was on your desktop while you were here, <laughs> and uh, what grew out of the desktop, and what, yeah, and how the well, you come back after eight years, yeah, it's and uh, so it would be great if you could say a few words about uh, the residency has an impact, had an uh -huh. impact, how it affects your writing. Yeah, oh, Natasha. Um, the residency, I, I, you know, the first time, the first time I was in this residency, the residency in so many ways provided me with a heart, inner space to be able to choose the pathway of the writer. So in so many ways, I, I feel this has been a, a return, a kind of almost tribute return uh, to the place where in so many ways it started, at, at least within. Um, and uh, in doing so, um, you, as you know, my own residency had two parts, the teaching part. I encountered uh, Yvonne the teacher, Yvonne the teacher of writing, and uh, I didn't know she existed, and I didn't know she loved teaching so much, and especially teaching writing. And uh, it's been an incredible revelation, certainly for me, uh, just the sheer uh, universes that have opened into the encounter with that, the, the pedagogical, you know, the writer, the, the writer as a teacher. So I want to elaborate on that. It's not part of the question, but if you just say a few words about where you talk, because uh, five okay. years from now we won't know. <laughs> maybe, I see. Uh, yeah. uh, a few words about what you've been working on on your desk. Maybe it yes, and yes. Nice okay, story. fine. Okay. Um, um, well, I, I've been teaching at uh, Grinnell College and uh, for the last uh, six weeks. Um, and what was on my desktop was uh, the, uh, the, five, the edits of the new book, The Dragonfly Sea, and uh, use this time that's been available, especially this last week, uh, just getting the last edit out. And it's been, again, uh, very significant. It's been a very significant 
moment. And I'm glad that I got the last edits out right here in Iowa. Just thank you. Thank you, IWP. Thank you for everything. Just, I think, uh, I thank you from the soul, from the heart, from uh, the world of words. Just thank you.